Okay. <sighs> okay, we'll save that. Okay, hello. My name is John Newstead. I work for Delta T Devices. And if you're interested in biomass production in a crop canopy, light interception, PAR or LAI analysis, or even comparing treatments in a trial, then really the Delta T SunScan system should be an essential part of your kit. Okay, so the Delta T SunScan system, it's a unique system and it's unique because it employs unique sensors. It actually uses these sensors to populate a sophisticated model of solar transmission through a canopy. It, uses, it measures six, well it measures four solar parameters and you put two in, which I'll come to in a few moments. But it's a very easy to use system. It's a very easy system to set up and put together and it's a very easy system to train people with. So at the end of the day you've got consistency, you've got reliability and robustness to your data sets. Okay so here we have the radio sun scan system. Now I think the radio system is the most versatile system. You can walk up to 200 meters around your crop without the restriction of cables dragging behind you. So it's, it's good, it's versatile, Let's see what we get in the box. So starting just to the right, this is the SunScan probe. This has 64 PAR sensors along it and you can output all 64 of those if you want to do PAR mapping. But this is the SunScan probe that you put in to the base of the crop. And to take your readings, you press that red button. So moving along, next in line is the BF5 BF Sunshine Sensor. So I'll talk a little bit more about this in a moment, um, but this is quite a unique sensor. It gives you um, diffuse and global radiation. Next in line, uh, we just have the uh, wireless unit that connects to the BF5, okay? And here are uh, some important little bits. These are wireless aerials. One sits on the wireless unit, one will go on to the SunScan probe. Okay, but we take them off for transportation. Then we have a tripod, simple, simple tripod. This is to mount the solar sensor and the wireless sensor on. And then we come to the handheld PDA. Okay, so the software, this connect, the software's on here, the, this connects to the handheld probe, the wand. And then lastly, we come to, your box may have um, uh, a selection of manuals and brochures. And in here, we've got some spare batteries, um, a charging cable for the handheld PDA. And this cable can be used to replace the wireless unit if, you don't, if, if you've, your batteries have gone flat. Um, or if you want to do some infield calibration. So you've got the cable in the kit. And that is the wireless sun scan. Okay, so hopefully that's all level now. So here we go. Um, I've just got the wand on the ground next to me, but we've got here um, set up the wireless unit with the solar sensor and the wireless transmitter. Okay, so we've set up the base station. I've got the wand and the PDA just at my feet here, but we've got a wireless transmitter here connected to the BF5 solar radiation sensor. Now, this is a really unique sensor. It's one of, adds to one of the real unique things to the SunScan system. Just inside this glass dome is a cutout shape that allows photodiodes underneath, one to be in full, full sun all the time, and one to be in full shade at any one time. 
Okay, this is very important. This outputs global and diffuse radiation. It's really quite a unique sensor. Importantly, though, when you're setting this up, you have to realize two things. One, because you don't need to orientate it north, south, or east or west, because the, this shadow mask does all the uh, uh, work for you, you can orientate this however you like at the edge of a field. Okay, that's quite an important point. The second thing to realize is that obviously you don't want to set it up where this aerial is casting a shadow over the solar sensor because you're going to get erroneous readings. And similarly, I don't want to be standing anywhere where I'm casting a shadow over the solar sensor. Okay? I just want to know that one of those photodiodes is always in full sun and one of those photodiodes is always in full shade. And I can see that now standing here. So let me just check the connections. First of all, we switch this wireless unit on. And in a moment, this LED here, I don't think you can see it in the sunshine, um, I can, it will start double bleeping. And there's a little LED on the BF5, and that should double bleep at the same time. It just shows they're connected, they're talking. Let me now just pick up the wand on the PDA and make a connection here. So as soon as I switch this on, there we go. The little LED on top here starts, um, lights up. It's one continuous bleep or one continuous um, light when it's searching for a signal and it starts to double bleep when it's made the connection. And it's double bleeping now and it's doing it at the same time those two units are. So they're all linked. Okay, that's what we need. Okay, I think I'm probably at about the range of my wireless unit here. We do sight in the manual, it's approximately 200 meters and I'm probably a little bit over, over that here. I know that because this LED, it was going to a continuous flash, it's now gone off and that just means I've come too far from the wireless, the base station. Okay, so I now need to go back towards my base station and hopefully this will then start, um, it will go sing, single LED, it will stay on as it's searching for that connection again and um, it will eventually connect and double flash. So that defines really, you can do this at the start before you start taking your samples, but it defines the area of your field that you can actually sample in. And when you've done that, you simply just go back to your base station and move it to another part and continue the process. So I'm just going to move closer to my base station. So another thing to bear in mind is battery life. Let me just balance this here. So these all run on AA batteries. Each one of these units should last about 500 hours or more. It does depend on how long you leave it switched on, not just how often you're using it, but how long you leave it switched on and don't leave it switched on when you've finished with it. Okay, it does happen. So a good thing, a good piece of advice would be check your batteries before you go out into the field. If you do find you need to replace them, they're AA, you simply have to unscrew each of these units and there's a, a battery slot in there. The same goes with the wand, the PDA, this is rechargeable. So you simply need to make sure you plug it in at least the night before you want to use it so you've got a full charge. The other thing to bear in mind is how far out into the field can I go? I've just told you you can use you can go 200 meters, but that does really depend on the environmental conditions where you are. So if I'm standing between the base station and this wand, I'm an obstacle, just like trees are, hedges are, and you're reducing the distance that that signal's going to go. The same if the weather's a little uh, wet, okay, water absorbs radio signal energy, and so you're not going to be able to go the full 200 meters. So it's worth just checking before you start taking measurements, how far can I go out into that field? So you would walk out with this unit and just keep an eye on the double bleeping. When that stops or goes to one single bleep, you know you're out of range and you have to move back towards the base station. So at that point, you know how far you can go. So you might cover that region and then to cover the rest of the field, you move your base station. Okay, quite, it's, reasonably straightforward. Okay, so we've come into the shade here just to show you how to set up and program the PDA. So first thing you do is switch it on. 
Okay, here we are. Now you might have a different PDA to that, to this one, uh, and that's because PDAs are upgraded and you get changed every few years. But what you're looking for on the PDA you've got is the Sun Data Software app. And we'll start that up. So your first screen is likely to be the last file that was used. If you want to um, load one you've done it back in your office, you simply go to load settings, you find the file you want, you've already saved, and there it is, you're ready to go. But if not, and you've come out to the field, you need to change some settings or um, just program it from scratch, it's pretty straightforward. You go to settings, and you've got these four tabs which you need to complete. Okay, so the first one is which COM port are you on? This is normally pre-programmed, but at the moment we, we either use COM1 or COM2. This one came pre-programmed COM2. If you're using the radio sun scan with the uh, base station, you need to have the BF5, it's BF5 or none. And you can tell it where you want to uh, um, uh, save all the data that uh, you're saving. That you're taking. The next tab is constants. So this system measures four complex solar parameters but it also requires you to input two other parameters and those are leaf absorption and the ELADP. ELADP is the ellipsoidal leaf angle distribution parameter. It's a bit of a handful, we'll just keep it as ELADP. So let's start with that one. A full explanation of the LADP can be found in the Delta T Devices manual for the sun scan. It also gives some values for various crops. So you should be able to find most of the common crops listed there. If you can't, there is also a section on how to create one of these ratios. And you may also be able to find an up-to-date one if you've got a, a, a less common or more obscure crop. You may find a value um, published on the uh, internet or an academic literature. So in this case, we've been, we're working with barley, and I know that's got an ELADP of 1.2. Leaf absorption is 0.85. We strongly advise you leave this value alone unless you have really good reason to adjust it. So a fully black leaf has a, an absorption ratio of 1.0. Most leaves, from our experience, come in at 0.8 or 0.9. So we use 0.85 as just a a middle value, but we strongly advise you only to adjust that if you have really good reason. So they're the only two inputs you need to make in the sun scam algorithm to get your outputs. Next we come on to some site information. So this particular PDA does not have a GPS unit, so you either need a handheld GPS unit or you can get your coordinates from Google Earth, Google Maps, and you input them here, longitude, latitude, site name, um, you need to make sure your clock's working correctly. Um, so these are all important factors. And then lastly, what do you want to display? So in this case, do you want LAI to be outputted, PAR to be outputted, or do you want all the sensor outputs to be displayed? So when you come to download, it will literally show everything. And that's all you need to do. So you're now ready to go out and take your readings.